Hello guys, my name is DeAndre Smith and I know you guys are excited about learning today. This lesson will cover placing numbers on a number line. The key to understanding how to put numbers on a number line is to first understand what numbers can be put on the number line. In algebra we study a group of numbers called the real numbers. Now the real numbers is comprised of uh, five categories. Uh, remember, there's five categories. You have the natural numbers, the whole numbers, the integers, the rational numbers, and the irrational numbers. The natural numbers are known as the counting numbers. Those are the numbers that we are first introduced to. Um, those numbers include um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up until positive infinity. So let me write some examples of some natural numbers. Okay. Now the whole numbers. The whole numbers are pretty much the natural numbers with the inclusion of zero. So let me write down some examples of some whole numbers. The integers are the whole numbers with the inclusion of the additive inverse. Now I know you all may be scratching your heads and wondering, what is the additive inverse? Well, additive inverse is simply a number that once you add it to the other number, it will 100% of the time give you zero. So let me give you an example of that. Say we had positive three. And we wanted to find some number such that it would equal zero. Well, the additive inverse of positive 3 would be negative 3. So therefore, 3 plus negative 3 is 0. So the additive inverse of positive 3 would be negative 3. Let's look at negative 5. Well, the additive inverse of negative 5 would be positive 5. So therefore, negative 5 plus positive 5 equals 0. Now let's go back to the integers. Well, the integers are the whole numbers with the inclusion of the, their additive inverses. So some examples of the integers would be Rational numbers have either a terminating number or a terminating group of numbers. So let's see how that works. For example, if I had a number 2.75, well, this has a terminating number. The terminating number would be 5, or the terminating number or the digit at which it ends. Another example would be 2.798. 6, 2. Well, in this number, the terminating digit or the ending digit would be 2. So therefore, this is a rational number. Now, let me give you an example of a number that can go on to infinity but still be a rational number. Okay, the number 6.7876 with a bar over it. That's an example of something that could be an irrational, an irrational number that can go on to infinity. As we know, the bar indicates that this number will just repeat its same pattern after it gets to the digit of 6. So therefore, this number is terminating. For irrational numbers, so since rational numbers terminate, irrational numbers, do they, do they terminate? No, irrational numbers do not terminate. Okay, so those numbers can go on to infinity 
and not have a any pattern in particular. So let's look at some examples of irrational numbers. Let's look at the square root of 2. Now the square root of 2 is equal to 1.41 4, 2, and some numbers that does not hold a particular pattern. So the square root of 2 would be an example of an irrational number. Another number would be pi. Pi is equal to 3.14 and some, some numbers that do not hold a particular pattern. So pi would also be an example of an irrational number. Now this is what I want you to do. I'm going to give you a few numbers and I want you to guess the type of groups that they would go into. Now the first number, 3. What group can that go into? Well, is 3 a natural number? Yes. Is 3 a whole number? Yes. Is 3 an integer? Yes. Is 3 a rational number? No, because it's not a terminating decimal. Is it an irrational number? Once again, no. Let's look at negative 3. Well, negative 3 will follow the same categories as positive 3. Let's look at negative one half. Now I know you all may be scratching your heads on this one and say, well you didn't give us any examples of fractions. Well fractions can be placed in a category as well. Um, if you convert the fraction to a decimal, um, then you can place them in a category. Now one half as a decimal happens to be negative 0 0.5. So negative 0 0.5 well, that wouldn't fit the natural or the whole number category or the integer number um, category for, for that case, but it would fit the rational category. So negative one half will only fit rational. Ah, let's look at this one. This one is familiar. 6.920 with a bar over it. Well, based on the previous lesson, we know that this is a rational number. Now that we know what numbers two that can go on a number line, let's start putting some numbers on a number line. Now, what I've drawn is an example of the real number line. Now notice the real number line kind of simulates how the real numbers should appear. Um, as if they were in order. Looking at our first number, the square root of 2. Now earlier we learned that the square root of 2 was equal to 1.41 1 and etc. So where we will put the square root of 2 on our real number line is right in between 1 and 2, kind of close to the halfway mark. So square root of 2, all done. Now let's look at pi. Well, pi, we also learned from earlier, was approximately 3.14, and etc. Okay, so pi would go between 3 and 4, but closer to the 3. Okay, 1 half. Well, one half we learned from earlier was equal to 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 would go in between 0 and 1, right in the in-between point. And lastly, we have a negative number, negative 3.75.
So negative 3.75 will go in between negative 3 and negative 4, but closer to negative 4. Okay, guys, I hope that this lesson was able to help you in some kind of way. Um, as always, you can contact me via email or you can call me at area code 313-577-4409. Worksheets and additional exercises to supplement this instruction are available upon request. So I look forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye.